What's going on folks? It's Larry here with Packmaster Dog Training. Uh, I want to make another video here. I want to touch on a subject that kind of was thrown my way this week. Kind of irritated me a little bit that I want to touch base with some of you folks with. A lot of you younger trainers have been asking me about this. Um, the difference between obedience training and behavior modification. Okay, let's break it down a little bit. You have a lot of trainers out there that are obedience trainers. That's what they'll tell you. They focus on, on dog obedience. That's it. Then you have trainers out there that call themselves behaviorists. They deal with behavioral problems. A lot of times the people who deal with behavioral problems don't really know much about obedience and can't teach dogs how to do things. Even all your simple commands, a sit down, come, you all that stuff. And on the other side of the coin, you have the obedience trainers who work on the sit, the down, the come, the heel, all that stuff, but really aren't very good at dealing with um, behavioral issues. I've always taken pride on, on both. I fix problems and I teach dogs. Um, I wasn't always real good at teaching dogs some of the more complicated things I didn't have the patience for, but over the years, you've learned that you really you really have to. So most of the dogs that I see have some kind of behavioral issues. That's why people call me, and, and I have very good success with, with behavioral issues. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about this last dog I just worked with and, and why I'm, I'm bringing this up, okay? So I get a call. I have this dog, um, aggression issues. We hear that a lot, okay? So when I go, I meet this person and the dog. The dog is showing some aggressive tendencies, but it's not its not an aggressive dog. It definitely has a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, and the dog was lashing out at me, making some charges like it was going to bite me, but but I knew they it was fake. You know, it was all just all baloney. It wasn't going to happen. So I'm going to tell you exactly how I handle this dog from day one and why, okay? So first lesson, I show up at this person's home with the dog. They meet me outside, they have the dog on a leash, the dog's barking, growling, lunging at me. I approach the owner, I never pay attention to the dog, I don't look at the dog, I'm not talking to the dog, the dog doesn't exist to me at this moment. In the meantime, as I'm talking to the owner, I'm very calm, I'm not face to face really, I'm more of have my side to the owner, this makes the dog a little more comfortable, and we're talking for a few minutes. I have food on my side in a pouch and we're talking. I'm ignoring the dog, okay? Every now and then I'll let out a bark and give a little fake lunge and the owner corrects him, whatever. After a couple of minutes, I ask for the leash. I take the leash. Now I'm holding the, 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 the leash of this dog and the dog's really not doing anything. He'll growl every now and then and, and you know, maybe give a little bit of a, a, not even a lunge towards me, you know, just an attempt to kind of back me off. I don't pay it any mind. I continue to talk to the owner. While I'm talking to the owner, I have some food in my hand and I'm dropping it on the floor, dropping it around my feet. I asked the owner at this point not to feed the dog in the morning. Okay, so now the dog is eating all around my feet. Okay, he's enjoying this. This is all, all of a sudden becoming an okay situation for him. Okay, as I stop dropping the food, he's looking at me like wanting more. So I drop a little bit more here and there. Then within a few minutes, I have the food in my hand. I'm not reaching out, I'm not giving it to him. I just have it in my hand, my hand's out the side, and my hand is open. I'm allowing the dog to take food out of my hand. Okay, this is probably all within the first 10, 12 minutes. Right now the dog is comfortable with me, and he's pushing on my hand more and more with his nose wanting more, to where I kind of open my pouch and I let him stick his nose right in there. He's taking his own food from my pouch, just building his confidence, okay? Just building this dog's confidence, getting more comfortable with me. Okay, lesson one, all I'm doing, after I make this initial um, association with him and me and the dog, we're hanging out, we're doing this stuff, I just start some simple basic leash work, making the dog comfortable, getting him to come to me, and now I start teaching him a marker word. I'm giving him the marker word, I'm feeding him, we're building this bond. Very, very easy, very relaxed, no big deal. Lesson one, I introduce him to the e-collar, and I'm conditioning him the way I do all dogs with the e-collar. I'm not going to go into how I do that. I've done that a thousand times. You guys know how I do it. So I'm conditioning him to the e-collar and I'm introducing place, which with a dog like this, a lot of times I'll wait till the second lesson, but he was catching on very fast. So I'm introducing him to place and I'm conditioning him with the e-collar. I am not implementing the e-collar 
when I'm teaching him place, okay? Mind you, he's scared to death to get on the place board. He won't touch it. So I take my time. I don't force him. I don't use any kind of pressure. I'm putting food on the place board. He's reaching over. He's eating the food off the place board, getting more comfortable. Then I'm luring him onto the place board. He touches the place board with one foot. I give him a big yes, I reward. Yes, for one foot, that's it. I continue to do that, and in, it, within a minute or so, he's got two feet on there. You understand where I'm going with this, okay? Within three or four minutes, he's up on the place board. He's not scared of that anymore, so we're working on that. I'm using different angles. I'm coming in from different areas, so I'm switching it up. Now I go back to conditioning with the e-collar a little bit. I keep it very, very simple. I'm teaching the owner what I want him to do for this next week. You understand what I'm saying? I know this is worse than watching paint dry, but I want to explain exactly what I did with this dog and why. That's the first lesson. Second level, uh, second lesson we meet, I continue to do the same. I'm not throwing a bunch of new things at this dog. Now I'm adding the marker word with the sit and I'm getting him to follow food, but I'm continuing to work on the place, but now I'm adding more distance and I'm still conditioning to the e-collar, but now I'm getting into the intermittent phase where I'm not using the e-collar every time, I'm not rewarding every time. I've talked about this, you understand where I'm going. Very boring stuff. But in the meantime, I'm building that relationship, I'm building the bond with that dog. He's more comfortable with me now. When I got out of the car for the second lesson, he was pretty easy with me. He showed a little bit of reactivity, but very quickly it stopped. That's day two. After day two, the owner informed me that he was going on vacation and he needed to board his dog someplace. I don't board dogs, only if I'm doing a board and train. I recommended somebody that does train dogs and boards dogs. This is someone I consider a friend and, and, and someone I trust and I board my dogs there. And he took the dog there. Well, when we met for his fourth lesson, his final lesson, I skipped over three. I'll go back to that. Um, he, he said something to me that kind of irritated me. He said that the person boarding his dog, the trainer, asked him kind of in a sarcastic way, I thought you were working with this dog. Have you ever done anything with this dog? He goes, well, yeah, yeah, we're, we're training him. He goes, okay, because I put a prong collar on this dog and tried to get him to go down and he wouldn't even go down. Okay, so that kind of got under my skin a little bit. And here's why. For one, this dog was never trained with a prong collar. I don't use prong collars. I'm not against prong collars. Nothing wrong with them. Great tool. I just don't use them. Okay. Um, for two, I never worked on a down with this dog. I don't teach a dog down that has any kind of fearful aggression issues or anxiety that isn't confident. I don't work on a down until towards the end of our time together. Okay, it's a very vulnerable position for a dog, and a lot of them aren't comfortable being taught to go into a down position. I don't touch on that till the end. So no, I did not work on a down with this dog. I don't do that. Everything I do with this dog up until this point is to boost this dog's confidence and boost that relationship between me and the dog, okay? That's why the dog does not go down. And second, you don't put a prong collar on a dog when you know nothing about this dog, you haven't worked with him, and the dog has never been trained with a prong collar. That's no different than putting an e-collar on the dog and using an e-collar on a dog that hasn't been trained. Understand what I'm saying? But here's a very common mistake that, that trainers make. They want to fix problems, but they don't know how to, and they do bad things. Understand what I'm saying here? Get where I'm going? Okay, let's go back to lesson three. Lesson three, we meet at a park, a public park. No fences. We meet with this dog, and this dog is off leash in a public park. Park, sorry, can't talk. Running free, running around free, having a good time, and what we're doing is we're practicing recalls in a public park with people and dogs around. It wasn't a very busy park, that's why we chose it. It's kind of out in the country, perfect location, and this dog did spectacular because the owners did spectacular. He went above and beyond everything I asked him to do. It was absolutely fantastic what he did. But up until this point, everything I told you is all we did. Very simple stuff. But the owner continued to work every day, few minutes here, few minutes there, on what I asked him to do. That was lesson three. We went several weeks before he had his 
fourth and final lesson. Several weeks. He was happy. Things were going great. Little quirks here and there he wanted to fix. It's okay. You contact me when you're ready. Well, he did. So now we met at my home. He came to my home for the fourth and final lesson. And what I did for the fourth and final lesson was I took Luca, my Malinois, out, and we were going to introduce, introduce him to another dog. And we were going to walk through my neighborhood and train along the way. So the way I introduced him to Luca, I didn't have him on the end of the leash, you know, say hello to each other, all that crap. No. He took his dog out of the car. I told him, okay, walk down the street. When you see me come out, walk towards me. We're going to pass on the street. I want to see the dog's reaction, and we go from there. That's what we did. You know, he showed a little reaction, but but not bad at all. I said, okay, let's walk together. So now we walk together, side by side, in my subdivision here. After walking for about 10 minutes, I was very happy what I saw from the dog. I got to an open field. I released Luca. He's running around. He's going to the bathroom, and then I took out a ball. Now I'm throwing a ball for Luca. Really big, really big distraction for the dog I'm training, right? I'm watching his reaction. I see that he's doing very well. I tell the owner, take him off the leash, let him go. That's what he did. So now you have this dog and Luca running around, having a good time. I did that for about five minutes. I said, okay, let's go. Now we continue to walk through my subdivision. We're walking. There's people, there's dogs, there's cars. There's a normal everyday life that most people live. But his dog is off leash. Completely off leash. Now, here's a dog that had some issues on leash. Reactive, little aggressive, you know, everyday problems that, that most of my fellow dog trainers hear. But now he is off leash and walking down the street with me and my dog and his owner and just doing beautifully. Every now and then we call him back. He comes to us. Now, one thing went wrong with that lesson. We stopped at every open field. We threw the ball. We let them play. We let them go to the bathroom. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was his fourth and final lesson. Completely off leash and comfortable in real world distractions. And I never taught the dog how to go down. Can you believe that crap? He didn't know how to go down, but yet he's off leash in public with another dog and a person after having reactivity issues. Pretty good stuff, okay? That was his final lesson. So that's what kind of irritated me. That comment. Putting a prong collar on a dog and saying he doesn't even know how to go down. I thought you were working with this dog. Trainers, all you young trainers out there. Obedience is an important part of behavior modification. It is. You definitely do it. But you have to do both. Learn how to fix dogs. Learn how to read dogs. Learn what makes dogs ticks. That's the important, that's the important part. But that takes a lot more experience. Okay, there is nothing more rewarding, I've said this before, than working with a fearful dog. Nothing more rewarding. It's difficult, not many can do it, but when you see a fearful dog turn into a nice, confident, happy dog, there's nothing better. And yeah, we do the obedience along the way, but I wait till the right time to teach certain things. So that guy had his final lesson, his fourth lesson. That's what I do in my private sessions for. But the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? He's doing so great. I'm going to give him one more lesson and I don't charge for that. And I'm going to teach him how to teach all the obedience. So we'll teach that dog, you know, the down, the, the sit, the heel. He knows these things for the most part, but I'm going to teach the owner how to continue and make them foolproof. So now that's what we'll do. He'll come back for one more and we'll do it. I'm sorry, this is a long video, but there's so many young trainers that don't understand the difference between obedience and behavior modification. They go together, but you need both, okay? You can't focus on one and not do the other. You need both. So please learn how to do both. I hope that gives you kind of a little bit of a picture. Um, I, I know it would have been great to see what I'm talking about, but that's all I did with a dog that had some serious issues. And I can guarantee you, if he went to many other places around here, that's what they're going to do. They're going to teach sit, down, come, heal. Oh, look, he walks on a loose leash. He stays there when we put him in a sit. But guess what? He's still going after friggin' people. You didn't fix the problems. Sitting down, don't fix behavioral problems. It's only part of the puzzle. You need it, but there's a lot more to it. So all you young trainers out there that are constant calling me and emailing me, I appreciate it. I love it, man. I, I love the conversations I'm having with all of you. And, and the support is, is it, it's humbling and truly appreciated. So keep it coming. But think about that next time you get a dog with some kind of behavioral issues, okay? Hope this helps. Thanks for listening. Thanks.